This is our hero Choi Nam the Uk, and he's about to get destroyed by his Asian parents for failing to get into university. And so he instantly begs for forgiveness, but we all know Asian parents, especially in anime, are ruthless, and our boy better rename himself to some Ting Wong. Regardless, right before he's able to receive his short end of the stick, his life flashes before him as his dad goes super shyan, ready to send Choi to another dimension. Unfortunately for him though, Choi wakes up the next day banished to another realm called the Boarding School of Clapping, I mean Seam Academy, well renowned for how strict it is. Within seconds of getting on board the school bus, a 10 out of 10 teacher you can find on OnlySus.com appears out of nowhere and ganks our boy already quizzing him on what to expect at the academy. Of course, Choi is unable to answer as he can only think about playing Minecraft and competitive Valorant. As such, a super strict only sussy teacher activates her demon mode powers and strikes fear into everyone on board. She then repeats herself out loud, claiming that at the academy, any type of dating is not allowed, and if they somehow find you containing signs of having a crush, then you will be left to fend for yourself at an isolated island. Nevertheless, as the teacher continues to berate other students, Choi ends up noticing the sea begin to surround him from all directions. And so he begins to panic as our boy didn't realize this academy was the real deal, taking place at a totally remote island to make sure no one can escape. Upon finally arriving at the academy, our boy is quick to run into your typical anime girl with proportions larger than American Wendy's meal sizes, and let's just say Choi was fully enamored by her pyramids of Giza. This causes Choi to blush, and we can already see that he's channeling his inner sussy baker probably busy thinking about what he's going to do tonight while hiding in his bed. However, as he's busy stuck in the sussy dream dimension, a few of his peers yell out to watch out as a soccer ball is seen barreling towards his way. He then snaps back to reality, realizing that this could be his chance to be seen as a Chad as he's a Manchester United fan, ready to trap the ball in front of all the girls. As such, he quickly drops his bag and heads into action, busy thinking about all the girls ready to fawn over him once he successfully traps the ball in such a graceful way. Unfortunately for him, just as he was about to do show off, he slips last second and bro experiences the number one pain you could ever have as a dude. In an instant, all boys grab their precious Dorito Chalupas in unison, looking absolutely distraught as we all know how bad it feels to get your spicy chicken tenders destroyed by a third party. So in the end, our hero falls to the ground with his mighty battering ram in retreat, whilst his crush looks on thinking that bro is such a clown. However, as none of the boys in vicinity can move due to them, all feeling the wave of our boy's pain, another girl appears to become his hero. Nonetheless, the girl can't understand why all the boys were writing in pain, so she volunteers to help send our simp to the healing office. Of course, our boy can't help himself but be embarrassed, but he's super thankful that another goddess has appeared before him, eager to help out his rookie become a behemoth once again. Upon arriving at their destination, the two get surprised ganked by a scene so sussy that his rookie gets healed instantly, as they can't fathom what they are seeing. It then turns out that the two have caught a student and teacher fueling the sussy fire nation as the male student kept on attacking the sealed gates of the teacher in front of him. Anyways, his bro kept blatantly staring at the entire ordeal. The girl who brought him here blurts out that she's so jealous of the two, causing our boy to start staring at her instead, totally confused at how someone can rice cake smash in broad daylight, especially spearheaded by a teacher. The girl then pipes up, claiming that this isn't her first time walking into something like this, so she isn't surprised, rather she's always amazed to see who ends up with who. She then continues to explain that while it is absolutely prohibited to even think about dating, you just have to get good and not get caught. Regardless, after watching for what seemed like an eternity, the teacher ends up activating her ultimate sussy jutsu to make sure her prey explodes within the next few moments. Unfortunately, or should I say fortunately for our boy, the girl notices that Choi's banana tree plantation has been expanding to its maximum capacity. Eventually, she freaks out and calls him out, super worried that something might be wrong with his banana tree as she's not yet fully aware of a man's powers. She then yells at him and orders him to remove his diamond-plated armor pants right this instant, looking like she's ready to heal whatever is needed. The girl then drops her knees like an angel, alerting our boy to not worry if something has gone awry as she knows basic healing skills, since she's actually a po-po preparation student. Nevertheless, our boy continually resists her seemingly innocent advances by attempting to let her know that she's got everything totally mixed up, and that his little rookie is totally fine. However, the girl insists that his life is in danger if he does not follow what she says, so she tries her hardest to mine his diamond pants right off the owner. But then, the turntables turn quickly, as the two end up accidentally falling into the room where rice cake smashing was taking place, all because the girl was busy wanting to be a guardian angel. 
This causes Choi to fall flat on the floor with his own banana tree uncovered with the girl right in front of the soil. Meanwhile, both the student and teacher inside end up freezing together, totally in disbelief. Our boy then hurriedly re-equips his diamond-plated pants, embarrassingly yelling back at the girl that it was just a misunderstanding, but both women in the room take a quick moment and marvel at his banana tree plantation before he was able to seal it up. Moments later, after everyone is back to their non-sussy selves, the boy busy rice cake smashing earlier ends up frustratedly asking what the heck these two are doing here, I don't even blame him for being upset. As soon as the heated bro finishes his question, the girl that brought Choi to the area quickly exits the room and waves goodbye, making an excuse that there's people waiting on her. Choi is then left to fend for himself in front of two mega sussy backus on his very first day at the academy, so he tries to explain his situation but who could really believe him? As such, the rice cake smasher bro sighs and actually face palms, unable to believe that his ultimate finishing move got interrupted by some weeb-looking newcomer. Regardless, the two boys decide to leave the room together, but as Choi leaves, the teacher makes a sussy face and tells our boy to make sure to come back whenever his rookie ever gets hurt again. Now we all know what she's trying to imply, especially in the context of very culture and action-packed anime. So bro is like, of course I will come back. Anyways, with the two boys leaving at the same time, Choi actually tries to befriend him after promising not to spill the beans, but the Chad just shrugs him off and continues on his way. We then fast forward to almost at the end of the day, where Choi finally gets to figure out his living arrangements and to see his first ever dorm experience. Upon finally making his way to the correct room, he happily opens the door, only to be unexpectedly greeted by another roommate. In an instant, Choi's smile is wiped away as he realizes that his roommate is the Chad from before who's also not entirely excited that the new guy is the same dude that interrupted his seeds from flowering. Regardless, with the two stuck together for at least a year, they try to look past what happened today and end up introducing each other formally, where we find out our boy is actually 23 years old. Now, if you ask me personally, there's no way these guys look their age, but nonetheless, the first thing Choi asks is if his roommate Kim is dating the health teacher. Kim then replies by claiming that no one in their right mind should be dating a teacher when there's a bunch of girls their age in their prime. He then explains that rice cake smashing just happens here often, since phones and the internet is not allowed, so what else can they do other than not be a Byongsen? Now a Byongsen is someone that doesn't get to experience the beauty of rice cake smashing at the academy within three months, so Kim orders him to make sure he doesn't become one. Kim also reveals the fact that once you attend this academy, a lot of people choose to prolong their stay if they think it's heaven, as their favorite pastime is to just rice cake destroy the living out of everyone. Fast forward to the next morning, Choi finds himself trying to find the cafeteria as he forgot to eat last night, but he stops in his tracks after seeing the bus teacher. He then watches on in silence and instantly turns red like a true sussy becca, busy dreaming about how nice would it be if she rode his bus in secret instead. Anyways, after staring for a few more moments, he decides he needs to snap out of it as his rookie behemoth might escape. So Choi forces himself to continue forward in pursuit of food to fuel him. However, as he turns a corner, and comes a rocket in the form of the red-haired girl from the day before, and this time his Taco Supreme gets absolutely crushed by her knee. Now that's two days in a row that his beef burrito had zero action, and instead gets absolutely smacked, so this might be a record for this type of anime where the main character loses out every time. Anyways, with the girl unsure on what to do, she just decides to apologize while our boy is busy hating his life. And to make matters worse, the girl actually just left him there to suffer and continued on running by like she's the roadrunner from Looney Tunes. As such, our boy decides to just spend his Sunday morning just being chilling in an outside bench hoping that his little rookie will cool off, but I'm pretty sure he totally forgot about the sussy teacher's offer. However, as bro continues to cool down, he gets ganked by his crush carrying something with her. The girl then whips out bread from her bag featuring Team Rocket as she knows his banana tree will blast off once again soon enough. But then after accepting the offering for peace, Choi notices that the girl is still awkwardly standing beside him, still busy staring at him and his bread. So he stops and realizes that maybe she's waiting on him to give her the sticker that all Teen Rocket bread comes with, so he eagerly offers it to her. But as he offers the sticker to her, she pulls out a mega chad move instead, as she ends up taking the entire bread from him, leaving our boy totally confused. She then too bites it like a true champ, leaving her quite happy right before she gets called forward by a few of her friends. Nevertheless, with Choi still deprived of some food, he musters up some courage and remembers that he needs to go visit the teacher from before as his Crunchwrap Supreme is starting to hurt even more. Upon arriving at her office, she tells him to sit down and decides to stare at him endearingly, wondering how a boy could get hit so many times in a row. 
However, I already knew this teacher was something else man, as she orders him to remove his diamond-plated pants so she can personally go check it out herself. Initially, our boy hesitates and slowly moves away, but she activates her sussy brainwash jutsu to tell Choi to not be embarrassed, as this is totally normal. In the end, our boy goes through with her demands, where she ends up giving a huge smile as she can't believe how lucky she is to witness the largest banana tree she's ever seen. And so she attacks like the Fire Nation, quickly aiming to swallow up the island containing his banana tree with one quick gulp. As Chui gets ready to face the full-on attack by the teacher, he accidentally activates the skill named Instant Harden, as Bro became Instant Noodles, but the teach gets even happier to see the tree being weaponized. Now if I was Choi, I wouldn't be embarrassed if someone wanted to heal my battering ram by removing my fitted armor pants. But as sussy as the teacher is, she tells him to hold on as she's ready to treat it. Suddenly, our boy feels some kind of wet calamaris circling his bean burrito. So he opens his eyes and wonders what the heck is going on even though Bro doesn't even have any plated diamond pants equipped anymore. Upon looking down, Choi realizes that the health teacher is currently busy treating his Geo dude by treating it as a Slurpee, and let's just say she's destroying and swallowing it like a championship Slurpee drinker. Of course, instead of shutting up and letting fate happen just like what happened to the chat from before, our boy pipes up and questions the teach about her questionable practices. She then replies by continually making Choi look like he's about to explode his volcano, and then stops for a moment because her jaw tightened started to hurt as she can't fathom how large his weapon is. Regardless, our boy quickly gets appeased by her compliment, but then he realized he can't get carried away so he leans in closer, asking her why she's drinking his lemonade if she said her job was to fix it instead. However, Miss Sussy gets absolutely angry that the boy has been asking too many questions, so she begins harambe gripping the banana plantation tightly, ordering Choi to just enjoy the ride. As such, Choi settles down as he can't do anything but let the Fire Nation attack and take over his plantation, but at least it looks like he's in utter bliss. Unfortunately, Miss Sussy stops for a second claiming that it's impossible to breathe because the battering ram she's trying to destroy is way too big for her gates and back door. So instead of continuing to taste all Starbucks drinks, she pulls out her secret forbidden abilities and tells our boy that it's time to wrap his bean burrito entirely with her fish rice bowl. And to do so, she rips open her white decorated armor, but of course our boy is still somehow hesitant even though his chicken tenders were already ravaged by the sussy wave. Luckily for Choi though, she gives no crap at all about his dumb remarks, so she proceeds to continue her plan she promptly named Order 69, allowing her sussy power levels to skyrocket through the roof. Eventually, the teach breaks the silence like a true anime character, causing our boy to blush as she sweetly tells Choi that today might be his luckiest day ever. And so it was as his anime gaming dreams start getting fulfilled as Bro always wanted the sussy Baldur's Gate experience. Anyways, very long story short, Bro ends up turning the turntables as he's the one that became the attacker of Gates, as the city got absolutely ran over with Choi's champion. And so our Bro leaves totally satisfied as if he ate his favorite Panda Express meal, claiming that he has to go take his placement exam now, but he's super happy that his problems were fixed perfectly. Simultaneously, right before Choi closes the door, the teacher yells out to make sure to visit her whenever he has a problem as she knows she can fix it anytime, anywhere. So fast forward the next day, we find Choi busy cramming since he's still trying to make it to university. And today, just happens to be the day where our boy is about to receive the results of his placement exams, hoping that he could at least be better than the average Joe. Upon taking a closer look at his results, he gets a flashback to him playing League of Legends all day as he apparently made it to the Platinum class. But since he's Asian, being a top 15% student isn't enough, as he hoped that he would at least surpass Emerald and land into the Diamond class. Nevertheless, as our boy sulks about landing basically what's equal to a B, he realizes his shoulder has been randomly ganked causing him to turn around. To his surprise, the girl who broke his little precious yesterday came to say hello, so our boy's frown is quickly turned upside down as he realizes his crush landed in the same class. She then asks if she can sit beside him, to which of course our bro instantly agrees to, trying to act cool and all but the only thing he can think of is if this is destiny and not the game. After sitting down the red-haired girl, or is it pink? Let me know in the comments below introduces herself to Choi as Ahanyan, and Bro didn't even have to ask. Our boy then crosses his arms and introduces himself, still stunned at the fact that in this school the girls keep talking to him, while in his old school every girl ignored him. Anyways, soy boy Choi randomly comments about how she must be so popular, and that she probably has a lot of male friends. However, I unrocks him back to reality and reveals that she actually has none and never hangs out with boys, but Choi is an exception today, since he shared his chocolate bread with her, presumptively hinting that she's the queen of mukbangs. 
Unfortunately, the two's bonding experience get interrupted by their teacher, yelling everyone to stop talking, but the old man looks like a non-fat Anoki from Naruto. A full hour then passes by and Bro looks exactly like me during class, as Troy tries his hardest to stay awake, and the only thing stopping him from sleeping is the fact that he's amazed his teacher also looks like a Tekken character named Hihachi. Then, when tries to follow along in math class, he starts dreaming and craving chicken breast because of the graph in front of him. Suddenly, the Fire Nation attacks again, causing our boy to wake up as he started thinking about the wrong chicken breast as Bro can only think of the sussy teacher. But you know, since it's a new year and he's trying his best to be a good student, Troy starts to slap himself awake and to get rid of the odd energy within him. Eventually, the boredom class finally ends and the only two left still sitting in their seats is Ayan and Choi. But our bro took things too seriously, so he's still trying to learn more as he wants to play video games again. Mere seconds later, Ayan gets up and starts worrying about Choi as she can't believe that our boy is planning to skip dinner tonight when it's stir-fried pork day. Nonetheless, Ayan leaves after Choi denies her invite to go eat with her, but I guess he's totally fine skipping out on stir-fried pork as he's tasted the pork of someone else the other day. And so our boy continues to study, with no one else left in the classroom, but me personally give me some of that stir-fried pork baby. However, as Bro is busy getting enlightened, a girl appears out of nowhere and stares at our boy from afar through a window. Eventually, the girl decides enough is enough, so she enters the room and ganks our boy by hitting his desk as Choi was as focused as a tank trying to dive the backline. It's then revealed that the girl is actually the same one that smashed a soccer ball straight at his own chicken tenders, but this time she looks like she's up to no good. Our boy then instantly looks up looking totally not amused, so he asks if she's only here to make fun of him, after she got to see his dragon slayer up close and personal. We then learn that she's actually here to apologize for that incident making his entire Excalibur exposed to the entire world, and hopes that Choi could understand as she didn't really mean to also leave him alone to fend for himself. However, as the girl finishes apologizing, the two hear a distinct voice from afar saying that there's only one classroom left that the mysterious person needs to check out. Then, upon hearing footsteps come closer through the hallway outside, the girl panics and tells Choi that they both need to hide quick. It's then revealed that the voice is coming from the teacher that was on the bus during day one, and her name happens to be Miss Yunbiel. Regardless, Miss Ball Hitter frantically explains that Miss Yunbiel is the strictest teacher in the academy, and right now a girl and dude are currently alone in a classroom together, and if found out, there will be dire consequences. As such, she decides that her big brain plan is to hide underneath the desk, while she lets the noob of the academy fend off Yunbiel. Luckily for these two, she makes it right in time as Miss Yubiel appears to check in on the room, and the teach already looks passive-aggressive. Within seconds, the teacher stares Choi down and makes a weird face, asking him what the heck he's doing all alone here when it's almost time for roll call. Choi is then quick to reply while profusely sweating like he's about to clutch up the biggest round of his life, making an excuse that he just wants to study as he couldn't focus earlier today. Unfortunately, Miss Yubiel stays quiet and proceeds to close the gap between her and the student, looking a little bit scary as she does so. At this point, Bro's heart begins to pound faster than when it's overtime and it's match point as she's getting to the desk. Suddenly, just as he thought he was about to get kicked out of the school, a wholesome moment appears out of nowhere as she decides to pat her boy on the head, commending him for actually studying. She then continues to compliment him, while the viewers get to see a nice quick preview of what's hopefully about to come in the future, as girl slays with the skirt. Regardless, Miss Yumbiel shows her nice side and reveals the fact that she's the one that actually graded his entrance exam and was happy that he did quite well since their exams are more difficult than normal. Anyways, the two continue to chat, but then our boy realizes that he could get in serious trouble due to hair appearing underneath him. So with no other choice left and to make sure they secure the bag, Bro decides to squeeze forward to prevent Miss Yumbiel from noticing anything. Unfortunately for the girl playing hide and seek, his actions cause her to be unable to move and leaves her stuck right at his banana tree plantation level. Suddenly, things get even worse for her as Bro accidentally matures the tree as his sword decides it's time to reach its full potential, causing the girl to get surprisingly ganked. The turntables then turn, even with Miss Yubiel leaving the room, due to the girl now remembering the day she got to uncover the behemoth that Cho is hiding. So she decides to unravel the behemoth once again, causing her boy to wonder what the heck is happening as he suddenly feels fresh cool air invade his ender dragon. Regardless, Bro begins to hear the same words that were uttered by the health teacher, as the girl tells him to hold still like the mannequin challenge. Unfortunately for her though, Bro gets up just as she was about to attack a fresh crunch wrap supreme where our boy begins to yell at her totally confused, wondering how she could be a po-po officer if she keeps trying to do things like this. 
The girl is then left speechless, just like me as I can't figure out why bro keeps letting girls do the same thing over and over then proceed to back out like a total wimp. As such, the girl gets up as well, frantically apologizing and tries to blame it on her estrogen levels being way too high this week as she apparently craved some vitamin D. Shortly after mumbling her apology exactly like her idol Kendrick Lomar, she proceeds to hurriedly leave the room and tells our boy she will never show up in front of him again. But you know what guys, our boy has to be a sussy Becca after all. So he yells out that he's sorry too and tries his best to stop her from leaving. Of course, after Choi sincerely apologizes about making fun of her dream, the girl ends up looking like she's fallen in love, but maybe it's just the sussy taking over. Nevertheless, the two end up clearing all the bad blood between one another as both happens to be massive Taylor Swift fans, but they also end up finally introducing their names to each other. After formally introducing themselves to each other, it's revealed that the girl's name is Yang Jaehee, and Choi finally finds out that it was her who smashed the soccer ball straight into him. Regardless, our boy gets a little bit frustrated upon finding out, but ends up thinking that not only is this girl smashing like Madison Beer, but she also plays sports. Suddenly, things go quiet as the two end up running out of things to talk about, so our bro decides to make a joke and goes, I'm pretty huge, right? He then follows up the charade with a Grammy-winning performance by pointing at his behemoth, whilst simultaneously asking if she wants to take a peek at Goliath again. Much to the surprise of Choi, Ji actually replies by shyly saying yes, where she also claims the fact that she's never seen such a masterful sword in her entire life. Of course, our boy was boneheaded the entire time as he was literally joking. So Choi is left stunned and speechless, unsure of what to do. But since this dude is the luckiest man alive, he doesn't have to do anything as Jay decides to level up by asking if she could be the David to his Goliath one last time. This time, Bro is still left shocked at what's unraveling. So he sheeply asks if she's actually not joking. To which she replies that she's absolutely serious. Eventually, our boy relents but claims that Jaehee needs to do all the work in releasing his Minecraft cart out of his diamond mine, due to him being too embarrassed to do it himself. And so she actually completes his quest and proceeds to endearingly ask if she can inspect the nether driving even closer. However, since our boy has already experienced his first ever sussy nation attacked, he realizes that he's a mega sussy Becca and it's time to experience more prime rice cake smashing with someone his age so he agrees. Eventually, Bro claims that it's not fair she's the one only playing Minecraft around here, so he takes the matters into his own hands and proceeds to play intense Roblox with her. Things then evolve into a full-out brawl as time quickly passes. Unfortunately, the two sussy masters get interrupted by a blaring alarm notifying everyone that there's less than 30 minutes until curfew is enforced. Upon hearing the news, G quickly equips her full set of Bando's armor and barges out the room like the Flash, telling our boy that they need to leave now as they'll start roll call any moment. As such, our bro is totally left by himself again. And let's just say his shirt is blue this time because it's clear bro got absolutely clapped by blue soccer balls. The story then continues with a disappointed Choi deciding to leave the classroom as bro can't believe he was literally so close to the protein finish line, only for him to get blocked last second by the alarm. However, just as he's about to exit the classroom, the door opens before him as he gets ganked by the sussy nation. It's then revealed that behind the door was Jaehee herself, looking like she regretted disappearing from the fresh vanilla ice cream she could have downed, so now she's back to make amends. Jaehee then barges straight in, like a true strong, independent woman with the largest city dump truck, where she uses her massive truck to close the door. Of course, our boy is utterly confused as he can't understand what caused the drastic change in Jaehee, but we all know Bro is loving every moment. Now with Jaehee absolutely smitten by his vanilla ice cream, she quickly urges Choi to get ready to send his train ramming through the narrow train tracks of the township of Jaehee, as they only have 15 minutes before the teachers appear. And so the two quickly close the gap between each other faster than a fully altered neon running it down the site, where they begin to commence romantic attacks. Unfortunately for these two though, Choi decides to go through the nice guy's finished last route by going slow and steady. But Jaehee has other plans, so she starts telling him to be a man as they need to quickly finish faster than one pump man. As such, they get on with the program as fast as they could, so Jaehee, like a true Stacy, jumps on top of a desk and orders Choi to put in the key inside her gate as fast as possible. And so our bro does as she expected, but she randomly tells him to stop right before his majestic entry into the city of Jaehee, as she didn't realize bro was built wider than those 22-lane highways in California. Nevertheless, time is ticking so our boy has no choice but to start riding the battering ram into her sunset, causing Jaehee's feet to curl due to the magnitude of the impacts from Choi. Eventually, the two lovebirds get interrupted in the middle of their mating call as another announcement echoed throughout every room, 
ordering every student to be in their respective rooms as it's time for the final check. As such, Mr. 22 Lane Highway packs up instantly as he knows his Asian parents will whoop him into another dimension if he gets expelled from the academy. However, the sussy turn tables turn as Choi watched his life flash before him right before he exited the room, due to the greatest one-kick woman hitting the door in front of him, forcing him to stay. With Choi stop right in his tracks, Ji reminds him of his promise of how he said he was going to make her reach the climax of Mount Everest three times today. And since it's only been once so far, she orders Choi to stay as they still have a couple minutes left to spare, and what kind of man would ever break their sussy promise? However, Jihee's threats fail to break through to our boy's logical mind as Bro is too busy being worried about the wrath of his parents as he knows female fish is temporary but pain is permanent. Too bad for Choi though, as Jihee is not having any of his cowardly self, so she brings it upon herself to make sure Choi makes good with his promise. And so the rest was history, as Choi trades his future anime life for some current relief as Jihee decides to transform into a mythical mount made specifically for Choi to enjoy. In the end, lightning began erupting from Choi's tree straight into his target, as if he's the god Thor, causing Jaehee to overflow with lightning more than once. So now with his promise ultimately kept all thanks to Jaehee transforming into that girl on the block, he decides to dip this time as there's literally only a few seconds to spare. Bro then began sprinting like his life is on the line, not wanting to be expelled, but truth be told, Bro was running faster than me when I have to urgently explode a bathroom. Upon making it inside his room, Choi prepared for the worst as he quickly places down his belongings and asks his roommate if the inspector showed up moments before. Somehow, it's revealed that our boy actually made it in the nick of time, so he starts claiming the reason why he's late is because he forgot to sharpen his pencil. Regardless, Kim shrugs off his excuse, but he gets annoyed that Choi can't admit that he just had some rice cake destroying experience as bro is being more cringe than a cringe lord. Nonetheless, just as Kim was about to scold our boy for being weird about it all, one of the inspectors barge in and interrupt them for the roll call. Shortly after, all the lights within the dorms began shutting off one by one, so Kim decides to go to sleep, but Choi looks like he's experiencing his first ever post-explosion clarity. Now equipped with the grand knowledge of the world due to his post-hazelnut clarity, he decides to go with the Hey, are you up bro move on Kim, causing him to be totally frustrated as he just wants to catch some Zs. Initially, Kim Fing being fast asleep, but it fails to fend off Mr. Grand Clarity, so Kim ends up relenting and asks what the heck Choi wants. It's then revealed that our boy just wanted to know from a master rice cake smasher what to do once you complete a sussy one versus one duel, as he has no clue about the proper etiquette. As such, Kim actually gives him good advice and tells Choi to just do whatever he wants to do, because if he's feeling a connection, then maybe he could pursue a relationship, or if it was just fueled by his banana tree, then keep her as a rice cake buddy. In the end, Kim rolls back into sleeping position and mumbles to Choi that everything here doesn't matter and to not get too attached, as everyone breaks up eventually. So with Kim now asleep again, Choi begins to recall what happened today when the sussy nation attacked, but he gets stumped about the fact that Ji asked him if he likes her, leaving him confused about girls. Nevertheless, Choi finally falls asleep, but the first thing he dreams about is having rice cake duels, surprisingly though it's not with Jae Instead of having a one versus one duel with Jae his dream is about his first encounter with a health teacher, where Bro is absolutely building some Lego blocks. However, his dream quickly turns into a nightmare as the strictest teacher ganks them from the middle jungle bush, where she instantly expels him and banishes him back to normal life. With our boy now expelled, he begins being traumatized by the thought of some Ting Wong coming back empty-handed to his parents, where he knows his life will now be forfeit. Then just as he was about to get reincarnated in his dream by the legendary Bat Kun, he snaps back to reality and wakes up with some sweat. Somehow his bed is perfectly made. Choi then comes to the realization that he just slept in harder than Smorlax, so he grabs all his things and hurries to his class knowing that he will be in deep trouble if he misses even one minute. Luckily for our boy though, he makes it into class and just as he expected, one guy is already dozing off and there is still two seats open at the back so there's some space for him still. Upon sitting down, Ro instantly does what every boy would do, and that would be to search for his crush in class, so he spots Aya in the front. Suddenly, just as he was about to continue staring at the crimson beauty, the class door swings open and in comes the feared Miss Ubiel. Although today she looks like she's packing more than the usual. Regardless, as she continues her cat walk to the front of the classroom, all of Choi's classmates begin quaking in their boots as Miss Ubiel was not supposed to be her teacher. The platinum class then began to erupt with questions, wondering why Miss Ubiel has taken over the class. So she explains that the previous teacher got pregnant, so now she's taking over forever. With the reveal that Yumbiel is now the head of the Platt class, things take an unexpected turn as everyone erupted in cheering instead, 
and I would be too since Yunbiel might as well be English for the best eye candy. Nonetheless, now confused with the sudden turn of events, Choi asks the nearest bro why everyone started cheering as they were all busy being scared literally moments before. It then turns out that the reason why everyone is going crazy is because Yubiel is a very famous lecturer. So famous in fact that people tried to pay her billions to give private lessons to their kids, but she declined and chose Seam Academy instead. Now I wonder what made her worth billions since I know for a fact those private lessons involved more than studying if you know what I mean. Anyways, fast forward to halfway in the class, Choi is surprisingly still awake where he's also found totally awestruck as he can't believe he's clearly understanding everything he used to find quite confusing before. And for the first time ever, as if this was all a dream, Choi actually got motivated to study for an upcoming exam as everything is flowing into his head like it's some kind of mind breeding technique. Eventually, Choi finishes the class so he quickly heads home as bro is exactly like me. One class is all it takes before I'm out, so he goes for lunch instead. However, as he mindlessly makes his way through the school hallways to make it to the cafeteria, he starts thinking that he's hallucinating as he keeps seeing Jaehee in front of him. Eventually, he realizes that it is actually Jaehee in front of him, and it's not just his sussy self overtaking his mind today. So Pro gets jolted awake, totally surprised. He then frantically starts looking around as if he's super scared that his teammates left him as the last one alive having to clutch the last round. After making sure it's clear, and that no one is nearby to hear him, Choi ends up leaning close to Jaehee and instantly blushes when he whispers and asks if it's awkward they ding-dong smash and ran yesterday. Much to his surprise, Jaehee responds by saying she doesn't think it's awkward at all, and there's no need to be unless he wants to keep being weird like this. Now riled up by his weirdo response, Ji squeezes together her best pair of lemons as hard as she can, whilst also telling him that they both played Donkey Kong last night since they both like each other. Regardless, after hearing Jaehee mention the word like again, Bro gets sent to the confused dimension, as he still has no idea what the heck she means since he just liked using his attack helicopter. Then at the same time as Jaehee is busy making her advance, Ion shows up out of nowhere eager to call him by his name. Our boy then finds himself in dire danger without him even knowing as he has now unexpectedly walked into the sights of two Burger Kings wanting his brand new sausage. The first Burger King then begins her strategic move as the menace Ion starts to display her double hoppers busy asking our boy if he wants to eat lunch together. But to make sure Ion does not get outdone by the spicy bacon whopper in front of her, she straight up asks Jaehee if she can borrow Choi as she says she has something super important to talk to him about today, so she asks for permission. Jay then sighs and decides to give up her control of Choi's property as she doesn't want to expose the fact she gobbled up his 20-piece nuggets yesterday. As such, Ion whips out a piece of paper later revealed to be the school cafeteria calendar and points at a very important star explaining that today's lunch menu is special meatballs. Ion, knowing that the secret to a man's heart is food, makes the claim if he decides to leave now and join her, then he can get extra meatballs as she's super close to the lunch lady. Now stuck between a hard rock and an even harder one, Choi quickly swings the corner to take a peek at Jaehee to make sure she isn't mad, but he ends up agreeing to Ayan's offer. Unfortunately for our boy, he made the rookie mistake of not having a third eye behind his head, so he accidentally makes the miscalculation of thinking Jaehee is totally fine with him having platonic lunch with his crush. She then starts questioning him like a controlling girlfriend, asking him more than once if he's going to have lunch right now, but he fails to capitalize on her hints. As such, he looks towards the cafeteria and confirms with her that his plan is to get lunch right now, as he's actually really hungry and he needs that energy right now. However, instead of getting sent straight to the dumpster for failing to correctly answer trick questions more than once, he gets shoved like a rag doll towards the closest wall by Jaehee. She then instantly activates her sussy jutsu and asks again if he's sure he wants to get meatballs or would he rather have his spaghetti and meatballs be the star of her dish right now. But as JD attempts even more of a crazy drive on his golf ball, our boy begins to panic again as he can't believe she would try such a thing right in the middle of a hallway. Nonetheless, Jay backs off and sighs as she can't fathom bro would actually pick meatballs over her, so she starts calling him out for actually choosing meatballs. Suddenly, just as we thought it was over for our boy, Jay pulls over her own tank tops and disables clothing visibility in the settings menu, causing our boy to stare at some ripe watermelons. Now that Choi has finally gotten the obvious hint from Jaehee, he begins to look around again and tells her he's down, but he just doesn't want to get caught. Luckily for him though, Jaehee pulls off her best Nguyen impersonation and goes, Don't worry about that, I know a place. And so the new arc begins as Jaehee brings our boy over to the academy gym, where not a single soul is in sight. Jaehee then pipes up and mentions the fact that since most people here are busy studying not wanting to fail again, it turns out that she's the only one that ever shows up at the gym.
So now Chua got the prime opportunity to toss her salad bowl for lunch instead, since JD does not want to lose to Ion and her random meatballs. However, our boy is currently filling up the bar with his intense sussy baker desires, whilst also worried that they might get caught, so Bro ends up wanting reassurance that no one ever comes here as he's more scared of his Asian parents. Regardless, Choi makes the correct decision of risking it all, since no normal boy is able to ever brag about bagging a classmate in their school gym. As such, Bro springs into action like spring onions, where Choi ends up making Ji lay on her back right before he activates Froppy's signature tonjutsu. Success, Choi is able to absolutely defeat Chi He's fresh papayas causing her to tremble like never before, so he ends up getting ganked out of the target sweet spot due to his perfect use of the forbidden ability. Mere seconds later, our boy decides it's his turn to whip out his holy sword Excalibur, but Ji He gets surprised and informs Choi that she literally just came from the top of Hogwarts. Nevertheless, our boy continues his saber cosplay from fate as he uses his holy Excalibur to directly pierce the front gates of Ji He's Hogwarts causing very loud elephant noises to emanate from the room due to his critical hits. Bro then starts elevating their gym work out by over 69 levels as he calls upon powers from Miley Cyrus, allowing him to borrow and use her wrecking ball skill to maximum effect. And so the rest was history, until of course our boy's super hearing abilities alerts him that someone sounds like they're right outside the gymnasium, and they have only a few seconds to quickly rearm their armors back on or Fitty's getting caught. Unfortunately for the two lovebirds, there's nowhere to hide as the mysterious footsteps traveled way too fast, so they end up having to cram inside a gym locker. Now with the two stuck inside a very sussy spot, Choi begins to freak out and while flabbergasted, he asks her why the heck someone's here when he thought she said no one's been here in months. The two then argue as Jaehee has no idea why someone decided to come here today, but while arguing, the two end up realizing that their clothes are still left out in the open in front of them. As such, Troy risks it all again right as the main doors swing wide open as Bro needed the undies to disappear or else everything is fully over for them. Then, as soon as our boy is able to retrieve his special personal belongings, the sussy turntables turn even more upon Troy realizing that the mysterious person barging in is actually his main crush, Ayan. Somehow though, Ayan totally misses the fact that Troy was literally right in front of her when she opened the door, so miraculously, our boy successfully escapes detection since she's apparently deaf as well. Regardless, it's revealed that Ayan brought along her best friend today, who's totally suspicious of her for randomly wanting to start working out. So the bestie questions Ayan if this is all just for that random guy she's been seeing. Ayan then continues on and informs bestie that the random guy's name is Choi, causing her bestie to pull off her best Jojo face since Choi is the first dude she's ever remembered. So now with the girls busy talking about Choi, our boy finds himself in deep trouble as Jihee gives him a look that cuts straight to his soul, so he tries his best to deflect her intense glances. Suddenly, Bro makes a huge mistake with his huge behemoth still out and about, as he starts powering up and blushes at the same time upon hearing that Ayan thinks he's super cool. Now me personally, if I was Jaehee, I would not be taking that huge disrespect of your man's Power Ranger activating due to another girl nearby, and we can also clearly see that Jaehee noticed and felt the evolution of our boy's sword. However, the sussy turn tables turn again when Jaehee decides to take action. So she turns around planning to envelope Choi's hot dog using her fresh buns, causing a quick sound to erupt. So now Bro is stuck in a hard spot again as they keep randomly making noise, and if they keep it up, Ayan and her bestie will end up coming to check if there's actually something inside the locker, ruining any future hope and relationship. To make matters worse, he's also being called a scaredy cat for not wanting to plow the farm in front of him, but he knows one thrust, I mean kiss, is all it takes. Nonetheless, Choi falls victim to what we call being a supreme sussy Becca as he greeds out for the prize in front of him, but his rocket ship accidentally made a weird and noticeable wet sound when it slapped straight into her space dock. It was then, at this very moment, Choi knew he screwed up as Ion looks like she will be the one that's going to end up banishing him out of the academy. However, with the grace of the sussy anime gods, the two get saved by the bestie calling out a high end to stop slacking off literally seconds before she was able to walk over to check out what she heard earlier. So now with the two getting saved by the bestie, our boy decides he's too deep into her portal so why not continue going as Ji's portal turns into a black hole continually sucking with full force. Meanwhile, Ayan and her bestie finish their routine so Ayan ends up sitting down to munch on some snacks she brought along with her, totally defeating the purpose of doing some cardio. However, she ends up removing some layers against her bestie's wishes, who's also super paranoid that anyone can come at any moment, but Ayan tells her to chill out since she doesn't think anyone even hits the gym here. So now with Ayan's true personality now exposed, our boy quickly notices causing him to get even more flustered while doing some cardio work himself, causing his banana tree to grow even larger. 
Regardless, with immense pressure currently constricting his tender juicy cheese hot dog, and with him finally getting to see Ion in a more personal way, he warns Jaehee that his colossal titan is about going cool down. And with his colossal titan soon about to explode in less than four attacks, Bro starts to panic as he realizes he can't blast off into Jaehee's space dock, and he can't even blast off outside of her dock as the girls outside will for sure hear or smell something fruity like Fruit Loops. As such, our boy is left with no choice other than to abruptly stop mid-battle, hoping for the best as he attempts his hardest to remember what he needs to do to activate Monk Mode. Unfortunately for Choi though, he forgot that Jaehee is a monster at horse riding so as soon as he stopped rowing the boat, she took it upon herself to continue causing him to get sent flying back to avoid creating a mini him. Bro's colossal titan then instantly goes on cooldown as Jaehee is an expert, but upon remembering that they just made some intense noise, Choi quickly swings the corner of the locker window to check if Ion is going to end up discovering them. But much to his relief, our boy finds out he has some amazing sussy plot armor to protect him. As it turns out, both Ion and the bestie already left the room. So now with the coast seemingly looking like it's clear, Choi opens up their hidden doorway to Narnia and attempts to evacuate since they need to clean up as the air is smelling more fruity than fruit gushers. Of course, just as our boy thought it was clear to grab some tissues, the door swings wide open again with Ion leading the charge, claiming that she for sure heard something come from the room. As such, Ion uses her keen sense of smell to figure out that this place is totally ain't smelling normal, and she knows for a fact that there's no way it came from her. She then claims that she's super intrigued by this smell, as it's something she's not ever been familiar with before, so she ends up following her gut and the scent straight into the lockers where Jaehee and Choi are hiding in. Upon pinpointing the epicenter of the fruit roll-up smell, she smashes the doors open, luckily though, she's unable to find anything inside as both lovebirds have once again escaped the jaws of defeat. And to add the cherry on top, whilst they furiously hide underneath the front desk of the gym, the bell rings taking Ion's attention from the gym as it's now lunchtime for everyone. As such, the two are able to breathe a sigh of relief again after hearing Ion instantly take off for lunch, yelling at the world to wait for her as she dearly loves mukbangs. Shortly after the coast seems finally clear again, the two begin to cover up their fresh peppers and papayas, where Ji ends up looking back at him and questions why he was so scared when Ion is just a student, and it's not like it was a teacher rolling in. And since no one ever gets expelled from school for apparently being caught by a student without evidence, Jaehee quickly comes to the conclusion that the reason he's acting up today is because of the girl. But since our boy seems pretty dumb and aloof, he tries to avoid the subject by randomly blurting out to Jaehee to ask about their relationship status, causing her to angrily walk out in total disbelief. Now the funny part here is that Choi doesn't even realize he screwed up, instead he starts thinking that Jaehee seems a little bit jealous of Ahayan, so he wonders why she's acting up like this. Regardless, Bro decides to just walk out of the room, totally confused to head back to his room, unable to put a finger on why Ji seems so frustrated with him, even though they literally just rice cakes smashed minutes before. Fast forward to the afternoon, we find our boy Bing chilling, trying to study right before his next class starts, but then Ahayan walks and notices him furiously taking notes. She then taps him on the shoulder and proceeds to sit down right behind him, where she eagerly questions him as to why he didn't show up to get some special meatballs of the week. Shortly after, Ayan continues on by looking sad as she explains that she was waiting for him during the entire lunch period, hoping that Choi Appa would actually show up on the most special day of the month. Upon seeing Ayan actually look affected and sad by his absence, Bro figures out that he really screwed up but he can't really explain to her that the reason he was late is because he was busy rice cake destroying. However, Choi reveals that he's actually big brain sometimes and is two steps ahead today. So to make it up to Ayan, Bro ends up whipping out a couple chocolate treats as he knows she loves them. As a result of being a temporary mega brain, Ayan quickly forgives him as she devours each chocolate one by one, but she makes him promise to show up the next time. Of course, our boy instantly agrees and makes the promise to not ditch her the next time and while seeing her super delighted thanks to the chocolates, Bro starts daydreaming of having Ion as her forever cute girlfriend. Initially, Choi starts thinking of all the cute and wholesome things they can do if they end up officially dating, but it's short-lived as the sussy nation invaded his thoughts. With things in his head escalating more than they do in the real world with Ion, Choi ends up slapping himself back to reality where he tells himself to stop allowing the sussy nation to take over him since she's the most innocent girl in his class. Anyways, fast forward 8 hours later, we find out that that our boy did not move a single inch from his chair due to studying, so he basically cosplayed some of you sweaty gamers. Then after stretching a little bit, he gets surprised ganked by Miss Ubiel at 8pm checking in on him, who's looking quite happy to see a student going hard at some little old studying. However, 
Things look like it's about to take take a sussy turn as Miss Ubiel proceeds to fully close the gap in between them, where she ends up reaching over super close, revealing some fantastic four personalities. Unfortunately for our boy though, just as he thought his dreams were about to come true, Miss Yunbiel directs her reach straight into a head pat where she tells Choi how she's so proud of him. Nevertheless, Bro doesn't mind that Miss Yunbiel only went for the typical anime head pat when she could have done something totally different, as Choi freezes to take in all of her beauty. But then the sussy turntables turn again, as Yu Beetle activates cat eyes and proceeds to lean in to ask him if he's down to do it with her. Upon hearing the magic words being uttered from Miss Yun Beetle's mouth, Bro quickly does algebra to piece things together, so he finally comes to the conclusion that his hopes and dreams weren't dash after all. As such, more and more sussy thoughts invade Choi's mind as he can't believe his luck, hopeful that he might actually score on the legendary teacher. Now we can't really blame him since Miss Yubiel looks like she got some prime ribs ready to be dismantled, so upon hearing her request for him to follow, he instantly accepts. Regardless, Bro eagerly follows her to her super secret special place in absolute bliss, super excited to stuff her blueberry muffins as he's always dreamt of this day. However, the two abruptly stop on their way as they start hearing very loud deep breathing coming from one of the back rooms nearby. Of course, Yubiel quickly rushes to open the door, only for her to catch two people partaking in gland to gland combat, causing her to start ripping into them. She also ends up banning the students specializing in the in and out dance, even though they relentlessly begged her on their knees for forgiveness. Nevertheless, ruthless Yubiel finishes up sending them home so she turns back to Choi, asking him if he's ready to continue, but now our boy's banana tree has for sure shrunk after witnessing the ordeal unfold. Unfortunately, Choi is still a mega sussy baka so he still has a little bit of hope that he's about to wet his Oreos using Yubiel's cup, so follows her to the end of the hallway. But much to his dismay and upon Yubiel, opening the special door, Choi gets met with a bunch of other students just sitting there staring at him. It's then revealed that Miss Yubiel wasn't about to play Smash Bros with Choi, instead she's helping him become more of a nerd since this is the special studying club. It was at this very moment Bro Newbie screwed up for listening to his mighty swords, since he's now stuck doing extra studying hours. All because he wanted to rumble in her jungle. Fast forward to the next morning, Choi is still busy regretting his decisions last night since he missed out on farming with his doe fruit in the third sea. Nonetheless, right before he was about to fall asleep in class, a classmate beside him suddenly falls to the ground looking like she got a good sniff of my deadly yet silent bombs. Bro is then quick to get out of his seat to check on her if she's okay, but she's already fully passed out. He then asks for help, but everyone just turns back around and refuses to help, unwilling to waste time as they are all too Asian and too competitive about their grades in the academy. Even the teacher braids Choi for even wanting to help, questioning him if he even wishes to go to college, and then ordering him to focus to not worry about her. Regardless, Chad Choi ignores everyone and rushes the girl to grab some help, so he brings her straight to the first teacher he has ever clapped. Luckily, the sussy teacher lets him know that the girl just needs some rest, and she will be perfectly fine tomorrow. But speaking of fine, my sussy senses are tingling more than ever. Call me Sussy Man instead of Spider-Man because literally two seconds later, Bro spaces out and stares right into the massive watermelons in front of him, causing him to be totally distracted. Bro then stares for like an entire minute until the teacher caught on. So upon realizing he got caught in 4K, he quickly turned around and tried to run off. However, right before Choi could make a run for it, she slams a book down and calls him back while his eyes disappear, so we already know things are about to get real. After abruptly stopping in his tracks, Choi braces for the worst but then the sussy turntables turn, since the teach tells him that it looks like he hasn't worked out in a while. Bro then stays perfectly still and quiet as he doesn't understand what's going on, so she ends up hopping on top of her desk and spells it out for the dumbfounded Choi. What she actually meant is that it's time for him to try out her double Big Mac with cheese, causing our boy to be absolutely stun locked while his banana tree came ripping out the pants. She then ordered him to get rid of all leather armor as fast as possible, since it's time for her to show him how a true workout is really done. With tossing the salad now underway, Choi looks around a little bit nervous after feeling the wind rush through Captain Underpants, but the teacher assures him to not worry because no one should be stopping by during these hours. She also mentions not to worry about the girl he brought here even though she's literally laying down right beside them since she's baking on her not waking up, showcasing her true supreme sussy bake tendencies. Regardless, the rest was history with the teacher showing him how to properly stretch all muscles to be more effective, and she even taught him some math since she loves the number equaling to 69. In the end, Bro discovered he was no match for the health teacher, when she activated the forbidden never ever going to let you go jutsu causing him to make a milkshake. Now the crazy part in all of this is that when he finally exploded his first milkshake on her table, she thought it was over, but Bro became one with the machine and went straight for part two. 
sending the Teach into overdrive mode. But it doesn't stop there, as it turns out this boss battle had three phases, and this menace easily defeated all parts causing his teacher to be utterly defeated, forced to tap out. Regardless, shortly after becoming a proud fitness anime trainer all thanks to his previous encounter, Troy rushes straight to the cafeteria as it's time for lunch and he has expended all his energy after creating and filling up three whole milk shakes. To be honest though, McDonald's needs to make sure to hire this guy since his milk machine is always up and running non-stop somehow. Anyways, after filling up his plate with Jollibee, he becomes a homing missile and locks onto Ion after noticing she's by herself being chillin' nearby. However, as he refills his energy bar after destroying the health teacher, he accidentally goes too hard and spills soup all over Ion. But just as I thought bro messed up, we discover he's a genius since he instantly goes to clean the spill all over her double pyramids of Giza like a boss. Luckily for Choi, Ion is loving every moment of this so she allows him to keep going. But the two are still wary of Miss Yudbiel, making her rounds and they don't want her to get the wrong impression. Eventually, Choi realizes that just a couple tissues won't be enough, so he chads up and orders Ion to follow him while she is still absolutely soaking with mushroom soup. Nevertheless, Ion has no qualms about following our boy, so it looks like this won't be the only thing that will get all over her very soon. Maybe I'm wrong though since upon the two sneaking their way through the hallways, they arrive at the girl's bathroom, so Choi decides to wait outside while Ion sorts everything out by herself. However, it's revealed the author got us in the first half, as Ayan comes rushing back out to B-Site, unable to clean up, since Troy's roommate is busy inside doing a drilling exercise with another girl. Now with the two waiting for his roommate to finish making his own vanilla milkshake, Troy gets the brilliant idea of sending her to the guy's bathroom instead. This time, Troy the sussy baker offers to help her and joins her after claiming that she's going to need help as there's too much in the back, but we already know where this is heading. Initially, the entire situation was actually pretty wholesome, since she ends up taking the private opportunity to ask our boy out on a date, to which he eagerly accepts. Unfortunately, the wholesome moment didn't last too long as they end up getting ganked by the sussy fire nation causing them to rush towards one of the stalls to hide. In a hurry to not get caught inside, I inconveniently land straight on top of our boy, leading the two to be in a very awkward position. At the same time, Troy didn't have the strength to stop the sausage he owns from evolving, causing her to feel the evolution the entire time they had to be perfectly still. With this spicy sausage having a mind on its own, Choi desperately tries to explain to his crush that it wasn't even him that meant to do that, and so he blames his chicken nuggets, saying it's trying to frame him. However, much to Choi's surprise, she mentions not to worry about it while looking like she caught the sussy love bug, so now my sussy senses are tingling more than ever. Shortly after spilling the beans, Ayan becomes one with the sussy fire nation by turning to face Choi, looking like today is going to be another super lucky day in his life. Of course, our boy is caught by the entire turntables turning, unable to believe what is happening in front of him, especially since it's innocent Ion. In the end, the innocent princess makes it her mission to calm down the spicy sausage in front of her, so she prepares for battle to get the meat straight out of its Asian casing, making sure another sticky milkshake is created right here, right now. With the duel now underway to make sure her opponent is down for the count, we discover that this is Ion's first time ever handling a potent familiar with a mind of its own. Nonetheless, within seconds of their duel commencing, and just like most of you, Bro loses the battle quickly causing his McDonald's milkshake to erupt, since Ion turned on her Dyson vacuum mode to max. Funnily enough, it's revealed that not only was Ion an elite suction cup master for her first time, but she's also a menace for finishing Choi's entire shake in one single gulp. Now don't pause for a second, because right after hitting the finish line, she was even further and begins a new race, sending our boy in absolute shock, so his rocket instantly gets ready for second liftoff. Unable to fathom how crazy this princess is. Eventually, his rocket breaches Earth's atmosphere, causing it to explode for a second time, but somehow this absolute demon readies for a third launch aiming to land straight deep within her Venus. Shortly after attempting a landing on planet Venus, she backs out from the space program claiming that her spaceship is not ready yet, making Choi instantly regret his decision. It's too late now though as his banana tree plantation caused him to go further than she expected, making Ion run away even though she was the one that initiated all of this. Regardless, Choi is left speechless after thinking Houston gave him the signal for the third lift off, but now he has scared off his number one crush with his rocket parts still out and about. Fast forward to later on in the evening, Ion ends up avoiding our boy so she heads straight home to her dorm, unsure of what to do as she didn't know she had it in her. Her roommate is quick to notice that something is off about her best friend, but she tries her best to figure out what's going but Ayan refuses to reveal the truth. Meanwhile, inside her dorm's bathroom, we discover that Ayan is having a peculiar problem to which she has never experienced before. 
Utterly confused to what the heck is happening, she points to her planet Venus, wondering why the heck it feels so worn like lava. But upon closer inspection, her planet had an unexpected leakage. But since she has no clue on how to remedy the problem, she gives up after being stuck there an hour and proceeds to leave the room totally flustered. She then jumps on her bed hoping to animate time travel forward with the powers of sleep, so we fast forward to the next day back at school. Surprisingly, Choi is the first one to class today, hopefully he could talk to Ayan before class starts, so there won't be any misunderstandings between them, even after his rocket ship created three buckets of milk. Unfortunately for him though, just as he was saying good morning to her, she instantly ignored him and ran to the back of the class while her bakery furiously swayed side to side. Unbeknownst to him though, our boy didn't do anything wrong, it's just that Ayan is going through a stage of figuring out that she's actually craving his banana tree plantation. She can't even dare to look towards him, probably super embarrassed that her planet Venus is craving his dark lightsaber to split her planet in half like a Death Star. Even after class, she uses her gymnastic skills to instantly get away from our boy, even though all he wants to do is apologize like a man, but she ain't having none of that. During lunch, she speeds away again like a Formula One race car driver leaving Choi in total distraught, but he's super determined in apologizing to his crush for getting his fingers too sticky that one time. Time is ticking for Choi though because he doesn't have a lot of time to try and apologize before he has to lock in and study like a true Asian, so Pro goes to brainstorm some ideas at the soccer field. But as he gets some fresh air while watching from afar, his sussy eyes locks onto Jaehee like the Terminator, so he has to fight the urge of his super soaker enlarging with too much already on his plate. Bro then face palms in absolute defeat after realizing that Jaehee also confuses him since he has no idea if their relationship counts as dating, but he also doesn't want to irk her for bringing it up. Suddenly, Choi hears a girl scream from the field, so he snaps back to reality and notices all the boys surrounding one of his girls, but he does nothing and continues to watch on. Luckily for him though, Ji pushes all the dudes away and yells for Choi to come get her, so this one is a true keeper. She then orders him to pick her up on his back, so Choi does as Master says, but Ji he tells him to hold her bakery properly since Bro is trying to avoid using his hands just to be polite. As such, Choi stops being a soy boy and grabs onto her cushions like a real man and squeezes them like fresh lemonade juice, but now his lightsaber is acting up again, so he has to be on his best behavior. Upon entering the school building, he drops Jae back to the ground after being unable to hold in the art of his sussy jutsu, so he needs a break or else his lightning rod will rock out straight out of his Compton. However, it dawns on him that the one person that can help out her injury is another woman he's been rice cakes smashing, so he wonders how it'll feel to see both of them interact with each other. As such, Bro takes a deep breath in hopes that it wouldn't be too weird for him since the last time these girls met was back in day one and that story was totally different. But much to Choi's surprise, he starts hearing sussy sounds come out of the office, so the two start having flashbacks to the first time they met this sussy teacher, and it seems like round 69 is in the works. Nonetheless, the two watch from the door as they witness another student try their luck with her, but this time she doesn't woof as impressed compared to when Choi is around her. But on the other hand, the student with the bleached hair is super excited for his first ever round at the school, so he sits down and gets ready for his one versus one duel. Unfortunately for him though, the teach changes her mind and declines their rice cake destroying after finding out that Bro has been hiding an undersized point guard down below. But Bro refuses to leave so he tries to gaslight someone twice his age, so that was a dumb move buddy, so the teach ends up scolding him for being a supreme sussy backa, when he got nothing to back it up. In the end, she flashes the get out of my face as soon as possible, or you're going to get expelled looks so the guy quickly got up and ran as fast as he can. After exiting her office, Jaehee wonders if it's the right time for them to go in, but Choi advises her to hold her horses and to wait like a minute or two since the teach might not be in the mood to properly help her out. With enough time passing by, the two anxiously enter together, but the teach swiftly comes to her rescue to apply some ointment and orders her to not do anything over the weekend so she can recover correctly. Shortly after finishing up the appointment, Choi wants to nope out of there as soon as possible since he began noticing the teach glancing at him so his sussy senses began tingling. It's too late though, he acted way too slow, causing her to order him to stay behind and since he doesn't want to blow it with Jaehee, he shoves her out the door so she doesn't see the teach make very sus faces at him. However, Jaehee senses something is off about the teach wanting to privately see Choi, so she barges back in and makes an excuse she's unable to walk alone right now. She then begs the teacher to talk to Choi another time because she desperately needs to be escorted back to avoid walking pains, so the teacher frustratingly agrees and bids farewell. With the students now gone and the teacher left alone, she can't believe she lost to a student, but she shakes her head when she realizes she's been leaking unknown substances the entire time Choi was in her office. 
After successfully baiting Choi into bringing her back to her dorm room, she raises the sussy alert to level 1 by pushing her devil fruits against him, which causes him to look at them in awe. Of course, he gets too distracted, so he ends up tripping on the pavement and proceeds to bring down Jaehee with him, whilst busy dreaming about all the things he gets to do with her. And just like that, Bro accidentally rizzes Jaehee by falling on top of her, but both of his hands land directly on her twin statues of liberty, making her instantly gasp for air. Worried that someone might notice him become a sussy beka, he keeps his hands on them while looking around to make sure no one caught him in 4K before making sure Jaehee is okay. But before he could apologize, Jaehee quickly gets up by herself and limps away, while thanking our boy for helping her out today. But Jaehee is bending it like Beckham, so something feels totally off. Now that Jaehee is speeding off away from him just like Ayan, Bro gets super angry at himself for being a sussy baka and starts convincing himself he needs to change. Mere seconds later, Choi teleports in front of Jaehee to complete his mission in helping her get back home, even though it's only a few steps away, so he tells her to hop on his back like his bottom frag teammates. He also attempts to apologize to her while hurrying her to hop on so both of them can finally rest after a long day. Suddenly, teacher Yoonbyul ganks them from out of nowhere and yells at them to ask what the heck they are doing together after school hours whilst looking ready to rip them a new one. But before Jaehee could think of an excuse, Choi mans up and takes the blame for it whilst trying to explain to Yoonbyul that he got forced by the health teacher to help Jaehee get to her dorm safely. So thanks to our boy's quick thinking, a suspicious Yubiel leaves the two with just a warning and tells them to avoid any unnecessary contact in the future. She then struts away with her crazy large bakeries in Tao, causing Choi to almost drool, but he gets saved by the pervy sage when he whispers into his ear to keep it cool, because Jaehee is still around. Nevertheless, Choi completes his mission and leaves to go back to his own room, but Jaehee stops him as he walks away, wanting to ask him if he has 15 minutes to spare, but we all know what she means by this. However, Choi attempts to play it cool and acts all clueless to try and get Jaehee to spill what she wants to do during the 15 minutes, but she ends up yelling at him that he wants him to rice cake destroy her. After yelling so loud that even nearby students could hear her, all attention turns to her, but she's a woman boss and she don't care what other people think, causing Choi's banana tree to instantly rise up. She then falls to the ground, buns first spread wide like butter, eager to already get the show on the road, but Choi doesn't want to get caught in public, so she orders him to pick her up. Luckily for Choi, Jaehee knows the ins and outs of the academy, so she helps him navigate to a nearby abandoned room that no teacher knows exists. A few seconds later, every piece of clothing flies into the air with the two not wanting to waste time, so they both eagerly get at it, spearheaded by all the blood rushing to Choi's lightning rod ready to ignite her planet Venus. But before he uses his chili hot dog to enter Jaehee's warmed-up bakery, she thanks him first for everything he's done today by giving his lightsaber a very nice oil change before their one versus one duel. Bro then almost loses the battle with Jaehee helping his nerf gun out to the best of her abilities, so after noticing he's prime and ready to go she removes her ponytail signal in the next phase. For the next phase, Choi holds on for his dear life because Jaehee uses the forbidden technique of adding some milk containers into the fray, so now he's really about to hit the boom and bust cycle more than once. After one minute elapses, Choi loses the battle and accidentally sprays Jaehee with his protein shake so he quickly falls on his knees to profusely apologize because he didn't even get to use his battering ram inside her castle gates. But Jaehee isn't disappointed at all. Instead, she's super happy because she planned this out in the beginning and she just wanted to make sure she was able to repay the favor after everything he's done for her today. Mere seconds later, Choi smacks himself awake and after doing so, he's able to revive his lightning rod allowing him to finally give Jaehee what she deserves. With the turntables now turning in favor of Jaehee, Bro brings back out his rocket ready for launch straight into her space program because it's her turn to cross the finish line since Choi is a gentle man after all. Thankfully, he's able to send her into another dimension allowing her to remember why she's totally smitten with him. And let's just say Bro exploded the volcano more than once.